Will you put some sunscreen on my back? Yeah, of course, yeah. man. Thanks, dude. Is there like sunscreen on my back? Am I good? Yeah, you're good, dude. You're like totally covered. Are you sure? Yeah, dude. I just don't want to get sunburned. Dude, when it's X Games, you got to be in the spirit, man. All right, I'm in the spirit, dude. Hey, I'm going to come in here. Let me show you what Van Stippen's going to do. Van Stippen. Van Stippen whip. Bop, 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 Boom. Boom. Jack bop, 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 trick. Bop, bop, front oh, break. Front flip, no oh, flip. Flip. Oh, oh, hey. hey, what are you dorks doing? Hey, Brett. We got somewhere to be. Let's okay. go. Let's go. Come on. like the turds you are. I just looked at the uh, screen. The screen went out and it just said, get shit done. <laughs> GSD. That's Rodney's motto. Last night uh, we had Moto best trick and our guest today right now is Harry Pink. Let's give it up for Harry Pink, everybody. Yes. Thank uh, you for coming. Harry, man, um, last night was kind of kind of rough, huh? Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm feeling it today. Microphone, speaking to the microphone. Yeah, yeah, feeling it today. Lucky to be walking. But, yeah, pumped to be there. Being at X Games, hanging out with everyone again. Man, God, fuck, I feel for you, dude. Like, that, that setup practice was... You guys didn't really get a practice. It had been pretty windy all week, yeah? Yeah. And, um... You, you you jumped last night. Uh, Jack, I was telling me last night. So 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 you went down on the front flip twice. Uh, what happened that last time? It just didn't come around, or you went too big? Like what happened? Uh, the last one, I got it around. I thought I was gonna land it. I knew that I went a little bit deep, but I was just doing everything I could to get the rotation, um, and just went deep and blew off when I landed. Yeah. I couldn't hang on to it. How you feeling? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty broken on the inside. It, um, yeah. Is that, yeah, you are? Yeah, no, nah, so I I actually had three crashes yesterday. I uh, landed my first two fronties, that were my first front flips to dirt or to the lander. And then the third one I crashed and corked my femur really good, like my thigh. Um, I'd broken it before, so that thing, like, yeah, that's what's the most pain right now. But having the three crashes, like, I G'd my back out real good on one. And then the last one, nah, I just took a really good hit to the chest. So yeah, my vagina's really sore today. Dang. <laughs> same, same here. Guys, we're gonna run like a quick little video. Um, this is Harry getting dressed up and doing his thing. Harry, how long have you been on Monster now? You've been with us a while, right? Yeah, we're get, creeping up to 10 years. Crazy, and and, Crazy. and, and that's not you. Um, Very great. Originally from Canberra, I didn't know that. I always thought you were just like a, I thought you were born, raised, Gold Coast. Yeah, it's like... Because you've got Gold Coast written all over you. Yeah, yeah, I've been on the Gold Coast for 10 years and I uh, don't think I'll be going back to Canberra anytime soon. No, nah, nobody goes back to Canberra, mate. Yeah. Um, Not even the politicians. <laughs> so the people that don't know, Canberra um, was a city in... Um, uh, 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 it's, it's our capital, but it was basically in between the two biggest cities, Melbourne and Sydney, and the politicians couldn't, he probably doesn't even know this, the politicians <laughs> couldn't figure out which one to make the capital, so they built a city in like the 50s and 60s and made it Australia's capital. Like in the middle of nowhere. Right? It's in between Melbourne and Sydney. It's in the middle of nowhere. I think I've driven through it on the way to, was it Seven Falls? What's it, Falls Creek or something? Uh, oh, you went to Perisher. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah you Falls drove through Creek. it to Perisher. Yeah. Danny's been to Australia once. He yeah, came he did. and did a snowboard competition. Yeah, if you go on a Threadbow or Parish Road, it's like the place you fly into and then you get your hire car and drive out there. But yeah, Canberra's just full office job cities. Uh, there's not much going on there and people are just on the rat race to get married and kids. and. Fight That's houses. just kind of Australia in general. Yeah, I don't... Mm, Gold Coast is... I feel like Gold Coast is like the LA of Australia where people that yeah. are trying to do stuff are kind of going there and there's lots of different ends of the scale. Like all my friends, like... You'd be, you have like your tradie mates that are trying to do the building stuff, influencer kind of crew, and then the athlete side of things, skydiving, really, and then like uh, wakeboarders, surfers, like all my friends are like a pretty wide range of activities, what they kind of do. 
Yeah, right. And uh, uh, Gold Coast, there's lots of good looking people, Brittany. You'd like it there. You'd fit right in. <laughs> you would really fit in. Well with Gold Coast. Have to go. <laughs> wow. <that outfit. laughs> hey, it's a very uh, Gold Coast outfit. Thank you. That's, that's what they wear in the wintertime there. Yeah, literally. <laughs> That's that's like a really standard just a yeah. Standard yeah 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 no yeah. I, I, South it really yeah. I'm killing it. <laughs> where's where's this twice. ramp you have that I see all the time? Is that in your backyard? Where's your setup? Yeah, so our freestyle compound, uh, it's it's on the Gold Coast. I'm not going to say specifically where it is because no, you don't weird. you don't yeah you don't need yeah. to say that. I, I'm but, just yeah no. Um, so our just really close friends, they let us use the land. And, yep. And, uh, yeah, it's um we have a really good relationship with them. Uh, they look after us a lot by letting us use the land and obviously in Australia it's really high risk with uh, getting sued and all those things if, if someone gets hurt on your property all that they have a big business with what they do so they have a lot at risk so it's really important we like keep a good relationship with them yeah respect the boundaries and uh, yeah we, it's sick but we've had that compound for about six years now airbags foam pits foam pits full of snakes is it really wait yeah, what do you mean foam pits full of snakes literal snakes yeah like I pulled two snakes out of it like the other day, like the week. What kind of snakes? Pythons. Dang. What? And, and there was a big brown skinned snake, like nearly the length of this table, on sitting on top of the foam. And you just pulled it out? Yeah. Just whipped it out. Whoa. Jeez. That's wild. Yeah. But so But they don't hurt you, right? Uh well brown snakes will kill you, but it will? Brown snakes? Yeah. Like the most poisonous snake one of I didn't know. It's like the fifth poisonous snake in the world. Is it? Yeah. What about the spiders? Because I know there's like really poisonous spiders there. Yeah, I feel like the Americans, the whole thing just gets blown out of what a little blown out. It's is. kind of crazy, it's man. Because he's like people that. in California are always like freaking out on, oh, Australia's crazy, whatnot. In California, you could be hiking in the Hollywood Hills and get eaten by a mountain lion. Yeah. And then if you're in the Mammoth Mountain or in the mountains, you could get eaten by a bear. Yeah, or a cougar. No, not that kind of cougar. They have cougars here, Dan. Oh, well, they do. In That's Florida. just in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> no, every mountain town has cougars. It's a thing. Is that a thing? It's a yeah, thing. Mountain lions and cougars are basically the same thing. Are yeah. they? Yeah. That's. Are you stirring the pot? No, I'm just saying. You're making it up. Dangerous cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're cool too. Not just like Australia has all these dangerous animals. <laughs> yeah, but it's dangerous. But we do have a weird. It's it's people like, oh, you go to Australia, you're gonna get bitten die. You know who did go to Australia for the first time and got bitten by uh, a redback spider? Ricky Melnick. No way. <laughs> I said, Ricky, that wasn't a redback spider, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's talk. Let's go back to talking about your, your job. Yeah. Um. Were you are you are you somewhat attempting to maybe potentially do a triple? Is that what's going on? Uh, yeah. So we, I did a triple flip at Nitro World Games last year. Yep. And yeah. Took that one out. Um, I really want to care. I really enjoyed the training leading into it, doing it. I love big ramp riding is where my passion's at. Yep. I want to keep doing more big ramp riding. And when I say if people, a lot of riders see it as like fear factor. I think the taller you go, the, the higher, the steeper angles you're using, less impact. Yep. And it's just more room in the air to do stuff. So um, that's more where my passion is, what I really enjoy doing. And it just scares the hell out of me and just keeps me feeling alive. Uh, but it's again, it's it's really important you have the correct equipment, right? Just to getting it right, and it's something that doesn't. You have to be very patient because there's a lot that can go wrong. Very patient. A lot can go wrong. Where where's the drive come from? And I know that in Australia, I mean, fuck. Yeah, it's we have a lot. Drying out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have a lot. Um, I was even in the field last night. You know, there's a like. Why does Australia have so much of the freestyle motor world? What, what, why? Is there a reason? Uh, good question. I feel like in America, there's just so many awesome free riding spots. So it's just what everyone kind of does. And there's yep. not a great deal of free riding spots in Australia. There are getting more and more like compounds and stuff that they are doing it, but they aren't like, you can just go ride in the hills and do stuff like that here. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, it's like America's got the free riding thing and then Aussies have just got the FMX thing going. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all private compounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you think that um, Australians have a, a little bit more of a screw loose? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we definitely, yeah, we're not Bridget's. Yeah. Brittany was definitely. married to an Australian. Yeah. <laughs> definitely a couple screw yeah, a looses, couple. right? I mean, you were talking about skydiving earlier. Yeah, how many times have you? Yeah, so 240 skydives roughly and 25 base jumps. 
What's scarier? Uh, base jumping's like, it's very, I love base jumping because it's so similar to moto. Um, to answer your question, base jumping is a lot more gnarly. It's it a, is, huh? It's the only sport you can do and do everything correct and still die. I heard, are you guys going to, are you guys going base jumping? Are you still going to be able to go now that your body's all? I, I need, I'm going to go get an x-ray on my leg after this and then, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm going to go do it. For, so we're going to Twin Four Bridge, Jacko, myself and a few other boys. Benny Richards and that. Um, yeah, we got our base rigs with this. It's it's so fun because you're standing on the bridge and it all happens in like three seconds kind of thing. And it's the same when we jump our jumps on the dirt bikes. It's all so much fear, so much concentration, so much risk, and it all happens in that three second window of like life or death. So same formulas, but with base jumping, you're either dead or alive. Like you can't, there's kind of no in the middle. So for us, <laughs> It, that's we live for that that's what we do like that's what we do so i find it relaxing nearly in a way because it's not putting so much pressure through your body where when you're on a dirt bike you're taking really heavy impacts on the down ramps whatever you're trying to do like whatever you're trying to work on so yeah it's 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 relaxing to get that that high adrenaline that focusing without having to take so much impact through your body it's kind of crazy man i feel like you guys are definitely a little crazy <laughs> in the best way possible but i think you guys are also very calculated yeah you know like everyone's always like why would you go flying in a plane with jacko even my dad you know when jacko picked me up on the plane lands in this dinky little by my dad's house and dad's like that's the plane you're getting <laughs> getting in he goes are you sure and i'm like no no i trust i trust the plane was so small we had to <laughs> cut my bag in half and stuff it in the thing as i waved goodbye to my dad and i'm like no 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 I, and i do in those situations people are like you're, you're you're fucking crazy to do that I, I, I yes but i also know that you guys are calculated and you know what you're doing uh, uh, and, and and in those situations, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down. Whatever, go down with Jacko. I'd go down with you. But I also know that you guys, um, it's like it's like calculated, it's very calculated chaos. You guys, in that split moment, you guys are most of the time. I feel like very in control of what's going on. Yeah, well, I mean, we do our best. Uh, it can be brutal. Like sometimes you do just have to send it and huck it and because depending on your training leading into the whatever it might be. But we try and be organized and prepared as we can for the moment, do the correct training. And when you say that, like it's cause we get humbled from the, when you look at our injury list, that's how we learn. It's like snapping femurs and breaking so many different bones in our bodies. Um, you really, it's, it's life or death. So it's really important that we do take it seriously, but on the outside in, it just looks like we're sending it all day long. No, I, I that's like one big thing I really watch is like, in you know your sport is like it's like you're holding on no matter what yeah like you're not really ever letting go or trying to ditch it right it's yeah. like you're I trying mean, to ride it out but yeah until, no, I feel yeah. But yeah you really got to and also like even if we do bail like we have a good enough air awareness to know how to fall or to get out of it where if someone that just had, didn't have any of that awareness and hucked it and did bail they like could potentially like it's, it's really serious accident or death or whatever it might be uh how much like does the kind of like airbag landing take away from some of these like injuries and helping you guys progress to this trick level without yeah it's a good question um so airbags the quality of the rider they can so then you get the underdogs sending the bigger tricks and then the guys that have w worked their butts off to be able to do it to dirt then now they're like then now they're blending in and then when the like the guys come through just hucking stuff and crashing and um and then they're landing on the airbag and bouncing off like a jumping castle it kind of it, it starts defeating the, the all the hard work that the pros yeah. have put in to be able to pull it off and take such high like the risk that they take the injuries that they've got to, like taken to get to that point so there's that little conflict side of it, but then there's the innovation side and what's possible. And when you're looking at the big ramp riding and when you, because uh, all those the audience want to see here is progression. That's what we're, that's, that's how you have an entertained crowd, seeing stuff they've never seen before. So that's where the airbags come in to make that possible. Um, there is a happy medium. Um, the down ramp that was out there uh, at this event, like I thought it was really good, really like that's, that's where the future is. That's the future for what we're trying to achieve. So is it kind of like one of those things where if you learn a trick like in a foam pit and then do it in a bag, is that final step like actually doing it on dirt? 
Yeah, yeah, correct. So I've kind of, I've stopped using foam pit. I'm just strictly yep. airbag guy. There are some guys that are like in between the two still. <coughs> Is that because there's brown belly snakes in your foam yeah. pit? Yeah, I wouldn't go in that <laughs> thing either. It's, it's just, but it, yeah, snakes, but I'm more the fire hazards for me. Yeah. Because it's so hot on the Gold Coast all year round. I'm on a 450, the, the header pipes get really hot and you're always trying to cool it down. If any bit of that foam goes up, like you- You're stuck in it. And there's been people that have been trapped in fire foam pits and wow. we've lost people to that so it's like I, yeah, take it really seriously and an airbag you don't get trapped like I, I see and in a foam pit you actually go to reverse in half a second when you watch someone jump in think about how big our jumps are how do you go to reverse in half a second so when you're looking at that impact it's like an, it's a car crash really. yeah like it's literally a car crash so yeah it's it's um airbags when you land on them you go through them so you're moving forward and it's a lot less impact on the body i think other riders still use foam pit and say airbags are worse whatever it is because you can get hurt on both Correct. you can get hurt on airbag right yeah i mean you yeah. can get hurt leaving. doing anything yeah literally it takes like 90% of the danger away, but there is that still that like- You still 10%. got a 100 kilo bike coming after yeah. you. So if you somehow disconnect from that bike and then it lands on you, whatever that might be, that's the biggest hazard. Like when you disconnect from the bike and then the bike hits you. Mm. So many people have broken their backs in foam bits from that. I think it's interesting what you said, like, uh, you, to look at that perspective as a writer, like, yes, you want to impress the judges and that's the contest and you want to, you know, out over, you know, to, to your competitors, but how I never took into consideration you guys are actually trying to create a show and entertainment value for the viewers as well. I think that that's something that's almost forgotten that you're not only competing you know, with others, but you're really just creating this entertainment value. Like what will make the audience have a good time? Yeah. It's a sure. whole different outlook on it. Massively. And that's where I think freestyle is getting a little bit mixed up with like the passion side of like what it used to be, the art, like, and it's, and, and it is evolving and it's changing a lot, but uh, there's, there's lots of uh, areas, whether it's like we're talking about best trick scenario or a freestyle course, like they are very, I know they're very separate disciplines when you're trying to achieve those higher goals of yeah. seeing something that hasn't been done before. Yeah. And uh, I think freestyle is actually at a time where they are using, they're trying to use outdated ramps still where half the riders are trying to use the, I call them outdated ramps, the original ramps that were in X Games in 2000. Uh, they're still so like sold on that. And then there are other guys trying to use the newer stuff. And I think the standard needs, I think the sport just needs to be stopped for a second. Everyone get together, reset the standards. And then, then we have a five years, minimum five year security of a future. That's crazy. The next chapter. Is there a question in here talking about expanding the sport or, or, or how can even X Games kind of help expand it? And, 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 and you're kind of going in that direction. Like, what? what where does the level, is there a level to where it can stop or, 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 or does it keep evolving in the way that the tricks and the way that it evolves or is there, and then take away freestyle motocross for a second. I'm just even, look at the highest air, like are they going to be able to go 70 feet out? I, I don't think that makes sense, right? Yeah, I feel you on that. When you're looking at the highest air, the quarter pipe guys, what they're achieving on that ramp, like at what point are they just bottoming that ramp out? And then where do you go from there? Do you get another, do you go the higher? The, the another eight up, feet. And then, and then feet. how high are we going to go to the point? So that's an interesting one with big air quarter pipe, stuff like that. Um, as far as moto goes, I think moto's at the start. You know, I said just stopping and reinventing that next chapter with the with the progression ramps of it, certain kinds, uh, locking in a standard for, and then it, everyone in the sport like has a standard to go off. But the, the progression ramps are kind of coming in, and it's like half doing it, and half the riders are doing it, or the other half aren't, and it's like it just gets real messy and crumbled. But I think FMX is. Uh, Definitely, like it's got a whole new chapter that's of like there's a big there's big, there's a lot of potential where it can go, and I think it's at the, a new a new chapter is about to be created for freestyle. I think so. I, I I definitely feel that, and I think that we we need to there needs to be some sort of series to where people can uh, align with it, right? You know, whereas you know. Uh, talking about UFC where there's a league and it's every weekend and then you have your pay-per-view fights and the big cards and all that. I think we need to, for, for and all of X Games, but there needs to be something people can follow along and some sort of point system of like, all right, there's this, they, how, however many events they are and there's the title sponsor of this event and 
all different, all, all over the place. But then at the end, there's some award or trophy or champion to where we know that person's the champion of the year for whatever discipline it is, right? Yep. And I think if people can follow along, then people can kind of understand it a little more. What's your take on the 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 last night? You know, the the guy that that the. the not yeah. flipping the bike, spinning themselves around the bike. What do they call that? Yeah, so the, I mean, Chuck Carruthers did that trick uh, however many years ago in X Games. Um, yep. I, I actually don't know the name of the trick. But I mean, they're doing a, they do like the double Superman seat grab and then they do the barrel roll. Yeah. Grab back onto the bike, the seat grab. It's not like we haven't on. seen it before. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I was just sitting in a meeting with the judges that were just uh, re going over how the decisions were made. And the way they worded it was. Uh, Jackson doing his front flip cliffhanger, you can build into that where the, the body burial, um, you can't half do it, you have to fully commit so there's no like warming into it. So yep. that's, that's what the judges kind of faved on. I personally don't agree on that, but when I say I agree on it, I just know, like, I just know front flips, I don't know, front flips is so technical and such a hard trick to throw a cliffhanger on that and everything. So gnarly. Yeah. Like, I, even last night, you almost got stuck upside down. I was like, fuck. Yeah, and it happens so easy on front flips. Like, you can get your crack, but if... Because you're chopping the throttle at the top of the lip and you're grabbing the brakes. Like, when I do a front flip, like, I'm literally looking at the top of the jump and then power really hard at the bottom and just literally chop the throttle at the top of the lip and grab the brakes. In my head, I'm telling myself, grab the brakes on the up ramp. But there's that half a second where I'm in the air and when I when I actually grab the brakes. And then that's what gets it rotating. Right, are you, right, are you, right. Are they like hitting the brakes on the ramp to get the moment uh, off? It's it's or literally it right half a second. Off? When you watch the videos on slow mo, we're yep. grabbing our brakes like just as we're off it, but in my head I'm like trying on, to hit you're on I'm it. just telling myself grab them on the lip, but are you never when I go over revision stuff, like I never actually get the up ramp. Do you, uh, obviously there were people a little upset that uh, freestyle motocross wasn't in it. It was just best trick. Yeah. Um, do you prefer to do just best trick or do you prefer to do the full line? Like the, the, uh, the, the go out and do the, the run? Yeah, yeah, I love doing the, I love doing the freestyle as well. Yeah. Sick. Um, same thing with the courses. It's from how it used to be to where it's evolving. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big chapter to, do a freestyle run correctly these days with all the progression ramps and getting the course right. Yep. Yeah. There's a big, yeah, it's, um, can't underestimate that because because now a best trick run is, I mean, sorry, a freestyle motocross run is just best trick, seven best tricks. That's what it is, right? Like, yeah, so it is gnarly. Like, but I feel that's like everything that. now, like watching Vert skateboard last night. Yeah. Every trick's a banger. Yeah. And like that was probably the best skateboard competition in goddamn 15 years. Yeah. Vert skateboard competition in 15 years. The energy was insane last night on that, but literally there's no safety trick or no every trick has to be a banger. You're right there, mate. Your microphone's a little loose. Yeah, no, we're good. A little soft. We're good. Just like right here. Just right here. Yeah, just... Do that again? Do you go? No, you do that. <laughs> no. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from... Paul, I'm just thank you right there. Studio <laughs> and crushing it as always, guys. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Got my back. Yeah, from what you're saying, um, so um, think about when you used to... Uh, what I'm seeing when I come to X Games now, like, I'm just looking at a bunch of really high-class athletes. Like, so many people, like, to be at this level that they're doing, it's like a full-blown athlete sport now. Like, you got to have your personal trainer. You're just doing all the one percenters. It's not like oh, I'm an action sports guy and I just send it when I feel like it. And there was You're guys, in the gym every day. Yeah. I'd, if you're not hurt, I feel like following you, you're, 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 you're not... You're still a little crazy and you probably still have a good time, but you're taking this very seriously. Yeah, well, I think with what we do, we have a lot of freedom and it's easy to pick up a lot of bad habits with a lot of having a lot of time in your hands. So I always try, whenever I'm home, I just have a really good structure of just to just get up, train, and then start my day. I always try to base my days off like tradie hours. So I'm like, I, I said to myself when I was uh, doing my carpentry apprenticeship when I was 17, I'm like, I made a promise to myself, if I could do whatever I wanted in these hours that wasn't working for someone else, would I work this hard for my, just whatever I'm doing? You so would I have been a nightmare to be on a tool site with, a work site with. 
Yeah, it's useless. <laughs> Can you imagine this guy showing up at 6 a.m. with a shovel uh, and his tool belt? Dude, I was, I was like so good at just like if there was a job of just like a wheelbarrow and bricks. Like I just fucking moved that shit. You would have been a bricklayer moved. for sure. Nah, that's too <laughs> nice. Yeah. But I, yeah, I enjoyed the carpentry stuff, but I always, I love just getting lost in my own head, just like kind of just getting after it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so internal injuries, you're all right. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm really sore, but I'm fine. And I think a lot of people don't understand that too, and I guess I'm learning more, but uh, you guys end up with a lot of internal injuries. It's not like a broken bone. You can see oh, I snapped my arm, which also happens a lot. Yeah. You guys have a lot of shit that happens inside. Like you, no, no, Tyler Beerman overshot the jump in yeah. practice, and then who was the other guy that ended up in hospital? Yeah, Rob Alderberg. So gold medalist, um, first jump, and it's just, yeah, I think he broke his neck. Oh, shit. Yeah. Completely missed the landing, but it, again, it was that there, there's you guys are having to try and figure out or, or, or go to the doctor and figure out what's wrong with you on the inside a lot, right? Yeah, and it's kind of gnarly like when you take these big jolts through your body with your training, you ba everything locks up, your diaphragm locks up just from the compression. So when you're trying to learn a trick and you take a really good hits of compression, it can take three weeks for your body to decompress and come good again. But when you're so dedicated on trying to learn the trick, you just keep beating yourself up and then you wonder why you're just going backwards so much so when you start tapping into a higher level of action sports your awareness levels and really you really need to know your own body so you can take hits and then not go and try the trick again and get seriously hurt yeah and do you notice like your training and you know keeping fit that has a lot to do with not only like taking the hits but the recovery yeah, for it sure. Helps you, yeah. It really comes down to the individual of the rider. Like uh, some riders will just be very cautious and not take much risk, but then they have amazing style and that's kind of where their riding is. And they can get away with not training as much because they just have a lot of time on the bike. But when you're trying to do innovation, triple backflips or whatever, the big ramp riding, you just need to be built to take hits. Yeah. Literally just mm. take hits. Like, yeah, it's gnarly. Guys in the chat, we see you in there. Thank you. Uh, yes, by Monster Energy. The trivia question for Harry Bink is going to be, um, what year, um, when did you do the triple flip? You did the triple flip in 2000. Last year. Last year. So 2022. What year on the Nitro World Games, what year did Harry Bink do uh, the first ever landed triple backflip? Uh, must be 18 years of age, uh, live in the United States. Email unleashed podcast at monsterenergy.com. Put your answers in there. Uh, Harry, you're, uh, you're, you're live, you're walking, you're healthy. You're not healthy, but you're alive and you're walking. Hopefully, you get to go on your base. Belko, get out of here. Go do, a, go, go do your job, mate. You could end up like him and that'd be trouble. Oh, dude. <laughs> I don't know how that guy's still walking. <laughs> when he walks, his knees are like touching because they're just pointed in so much. He says to me when he gets on the aeroplane, he just kind of buckles in as tight as he can and then he just, you know, <laughs> sleeps like that. Oh, dude, I feel for that guy. He's yeah. probably yeah, one of the most injuries out of any rider. Yeah, right? Yeah, his feet. Between him and Travis Pastrana, there. Yeah, but they're, that's the thing. It's, it's when you guys go down... You, you, it's, it's. You don't just brush it off. It's like you, you know, yeah. you crashed twice yesterday, and you can barely walk. Yeah, uh, that's why I train so much, literally, because if I, 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 I already have a lot of injuries, arthritis in certain joints. So if I'm not consistently moving, the arthritis gets a hold of me, and especially with our lifestyle, like. You just got to be doing it, otherwise you just kind of get left behind. Or you take a hit and then you have to sit out for a month versus a week or whatever that might be. What's next for you? When are you going back home? When's the next competition? Like, what's go what's going on? Yeah, so after here we're going to Silverstone. I'm um, sorry, yeah, Silverstone MotoGP. Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah. You like going to the GP races? I've never been to a MotoGP. Oh, you haven't? Nah. And ah, doing, they go fast. We're doing the monster three-day demo with yep. all the boys, like Sheeny, uh, Julian, Jacko, myself, uh, we're with Andre Villa. Um, so, yeah, hanging out here, going to do some base jumping for five days. We're going to do some monster filming Monday, Tuesday. And then, yeah, shoot over to Europe and do some stuff over there. Uh, one thing I wanted before we go, uh, you... Um, no dirt. There were no dirt landings here. Yeah. And then that was like a, a bit of a topic. Um, Jacko said that the that 
this, the, 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 you like these landings. Like yeah. he was telling me that the landing kind of saved you. If yeah. there had been a dirt, you probably, you'd probably be in the hospital right now. Yeah, correct. Right. I, would, I don't think I would have been able to get up the way I did. Yeah. I, actually, no. To answer, I probably would have got up. For sure, you would have. Yeah. But it wouldn't, have, you wouldn't, it wouldn't have been good today. I'd be a lot more sorry. So, do we stick to this? Do we say, hey, maybe the dirt, we get rid of the dirt landings? Yeah, 100%, because with the progression and where we're going, we want to get taller and higher, and that, I think scaffolding is a correct way to, of doing it. And a safety thing. At this point, we've got to start thinking about safety. 100%. When you build the course, it should be safety over anything. Just yep. Because, like, when you have Rob doing his first jump, it, it, it's a jump that's been in the sport for 20 years, and for him to have that accident on the first jump, um, that's that's the safety stuff I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, we're we're on a really good chapter. We're on a really good journey, and there's a big future of what we're doing. Sick. Yeah. Well, Harry, we love you here at Monster Energy. In rest up, enjoy the rest of your time. Enjoy the base jumping trip. Stay safe. Guys, any last questions before we let him go? No. Nope. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate you guys yeah. having me. We're back. Right. We, we are, are back. back. Our new guest today, our second guest of the day, Benny Richards. Benny, did I meet you uh, when I came to Jacko's in 2018? Yeah, Is that when we first years met? Back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like 17 or 18 yeah, then. Yeah, I can't, yeah. Yeah, I Jeez. Think so. yeah, it's been a while, Dinger. It's come a long way. You've right. come a long way, though. Right, right. You, yeah. you, you were not doing double backflips when I first met you, I don't think. No, 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 no. No, the double flip's only been uh, sort of. Up my sleeve for probably two years now, yeah. And you've you, you you hit it every time. You've got that thing on lock. Yeah, I've done a bunch. Yeah, yeah. They feel good. It's still super scary, obviously, but um, yeah, I've done enough practice at home, and yeah, I've learned the right way, so it definitely helps. Well, he grew up. He grew up Jacko's his teacher. Jacko's yeah, his mentor. Yes. <laughs> Jacko's his father. Jacko's his mother. Uh -oh. Jacko's his stepsister. <laughs> Jacko's everything. So for good or bad, he definitely has the sensei. Um, on 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 you know a lot of things, but I mean for those of you who don't know Jacko's house is what's the best way to explain it? I mean it's like a, it's like know, a training it's facility. Hard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. His his uh, FMX course is definitely like the ultimate training facility. It's got everything you need, uh, all the different ramps, foam pit, airbags, you name it. And then and then you, he built. You guys have that big inside right, one too. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, he built that because uh, obviously before X Games. Uh, summer X Games, it's winter back home, so we always have trouble with getting rain right before the event and we can't, we don't get enough practice in. So Jacko came up with his genius idea that he'd build, he's like, oh well, we'll build a course indoors. So yeah, he literally built a, a big cover over his landing and uh, in his foam pit, he put ends on it. It's not looking so great now. Uh, Why? A couple bad engineers, I don't know. Really? <laughs> yeah, we, we sort of, we uh, planned it late one night. <laughs> <laughs> See how everything goes there, planned late his one night. engineer is also his protege. So yeah, just, right, right. just to put in context, Jacko lives on like 30,000 acres. Yeah, massive. <laughs> He's in the sticks. We're in the sticks out there. Wagga Wagga. So wagga good. Wagga in Australia is a joke where I come from. You wagga, go, where are you from? Yeah. Wagga Wagga, which means you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, so yeah. it's not a real place. It no, is it real. Is, it is. It's okay. my hometown, Wagga Wagga. So yeah, it's Wagga Wagga, Dan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But not many people go there. No, I, wa I want to go. No, there. no, no. It's actually kind of big, my hometown, Wagga. It's. What are some I of think, the big I think restaurants we have, I think in we the have area? Sixty-five thousand people. It's the biggest inland city in Huge, South Dad, Wales. Huge, Dan. Sixty-five thousand people. Yeah, that's pretty damn big. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's. <laughs> it's also the size of New Jersey. In comparison, yeah, it's nothing. But yeah. yeah. We uh, guys, we have a video here of Ben Richards. Uh, I was supposed to play it at the beginning, so I'm going to roll that right now. Uh, we're going to go split screen. Uh, you can see yourself there. Is this all at Jacko's? Yeah, this is Strongy's place. Yeah, yeah, we filmed this, uh, I think maybe two years ago. And then this tent Ooh. out the back here, that's the indoor, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, the tent is uh, definitely, like, it was really good while it was running properly. And it must be nice, you guys can just have a setup, rebuild a setup. Here, here, here we are on the indoors, yeah, kind of yeah, Jackson yeah. explaining what's going on there. And now, we have lights in there too, so we can train at night. So we just used to go in there, turn the lights on and ride at night time. Now, was why was the philosophy to build this indoors? Uh, or, because, or because of the uh, the weather that we used to deal with before X Games. Like, like, like we used to, didn't have enough training. Right, so this basically means you guys can train summer, Whenever, winter. Year round. Yeah, windy, it doesn't matter. You just go into the... Yeah. Yeah, go into the Thunderdome and it'll now, sweet. 
Uh, Bink was saying up in Queensland, they got brown belly snakes in their foam pit. Any snakes yeah. in any brown belly snakes oh, in yeah. your foam pit? Uh, I don't know about the I don't know about the foam pit. I'm sure there is, but no, there's definitely a lot of brown snakes getting around Strongy's place. Wow, there's a big trout <laughs> snake getting around there too. Is Skip is Skip the so is Skip still around? Yeah, Skip's around. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so 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 on the property, there's a. Uh, there's a kangaroo that was, yeah. uh, it was, its mum was oh, hit and killed yeah, by a car. I remember this. And yeah, then yeah. they found the baby yeah. and then nursed the baby back. So the, and then they got the formula. So they fed the yeah. formula like yeah, a baby yeah, yeah. bottle. Now the kangaroo still lives on the house. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of sleeps inside, but goes in the runs into the wild, but then comes home. It's like, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a home. Really? It's a pet yeah. kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he big? Uh, she's kind of not that big. She's probably seven now, but she's probably only like, yeah, it's not that big, kind of small. And she sleeps in the house? Not anymore. Not anymore. When, when, when she was young and she was tiny, she was literally this big. Aww. And she, we used to just put her in a, a, a pillowcase and just hang it on the door and she'd sleep in there all night. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. And then yeah. is she little, is she, how does she do around the motorcycles? Yeah, she's cool. She's, she loves it. She always just hangs out at the shed and just watches. I don't know. It'd be cool if it was she, the it's first pack funny. We have, we have to put a, we put, right. a, we put a collar on her. She runs around with a collar and yeah. <laughs> Because there's so many kangaroos out there, like you, we put a collar on her, so we we, so know, no we know who's you know which one it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes her, yeah, takes her out. <laughs> well, is is it so yeah. no one takes her or, or what? Why? Nah, yeah, I think. Uh, well, obviously there's so many kangaroos. They're a pest. So um, for farming, I wasn't on, gonna on tell farm, anybody. They're a pest. So. We shoot them. Yeah, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta clean a few up every now and then. <laughs> so if you put it, if you put it. <laughs> if you, <laughs> There's no yeah. simple way to put it, but yeah, you have to put a collar on it so you know it's not skip when you're looking down the barrel. Did you know that you're um, the youngest freestyle motocross competitor uh, this weekend? Did you uh, know that? Yeah, yeah. You did? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Do they pick on you in the pits? Yeah, not really. <laughs> I, I try. Dan, you know what that means, right? <laughs> it means yes, like hazing big time. They hazing you back there, dude? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool. Um, I think the next the next closest to me in age is Ackerman, and he's 25. I'm 22. So yeah, you're still a baby. There's still a few years there. Yeah, yeah. What um, you know, uh, uh, well, well, you've got the double. What, what what are you working towards now? And you do because most of the time I see you right, you kind of prefer a freestyle like you before. Right. Pff, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's that only that because of the level of what best tricks at now. Like it's so hard, and, and and the people that are competing. I mean, it's taken them their whole careers to to get to the point. They've been around a long time. Like it's taken them their whole careers to get and learn the tricks that they're doing. Now. Yeah, it's hard. It's so hard for me, like coming in as a new guy, and to be at that level to be competitive. Like it's, I don't have the experience they've got. So, even like a double flip, man. It's like, it's hard because that's such a hard, scary trick, but. To go in there and just go, I hope I land it and maybe walk away with like a, I don't know, six, seventh place. It's, you know. But knowing that, you know, and Danny, you could probably jump on this because you know you're the another person at the table that's come through competitively and at a young age. Like, I think knowing that and being around those older guys, you take in their wiseness, yeah, you yeah, take in definitely. their years, and you're like, all right. Yeah. I don't need to win X Games when I'm 23, but maybe when I'm 25, I want to win right. X Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a realistic oh, goal. Man. Watching that podium last night made me so hungry. I was like, sick. Oh, dude, I just want to be up there. You know? and, I, and not just freestyle motocross right now. I it think it excites me too. Like I, re I wanted, I want to keep it going. Yeah. Like it was like, wow, I want to, I want to see what, what else is possible. Keep pushing it. Yeah. yeah. And you seem really comfortable out there. Yeah, I just try and stay calm, collected, composed. If you can't do that, and you know, it's it, yeah, you've already kind of lost, you know. Like if you if you go out there and you're racing around and you and you don't know you don't know what you're doing, I mean, it makes the job a lot harder for sure. Speaking of racing, did you race? Did you grow up racing? No, never. What did you do? Nah, not even anyone in my family are into dirt bikes at all. <laughs> it was just so lucky. Um, I got a couple uh, brothers and sisters, two older sisters and a brother. Yep. And my parents, we bought. They bought a, a property like 10 minutes out of town. Just happened to be across the road from uh, my good buddy Truman Carroll. Yep. He was a freestyle motocross rider. So me and my brother were like three and four years old. And we just watched him ride through the fence every day. And, like we didn't even have push bikes. We had nothing. My, my parents weren't into it. So, And then uh, we'd watch him. And then I think we finally got push bikes and we started building jumps. And then I went on to get a motorbike and we started jumping jumps. And then I think uh, by the time I was on a KX65, Truman, he like come over and he asked me. We we're on the fence one day. He's like, "You guys want to come over and ride?" We're like, "Yeah, sweet." 
we started to jump on this little ramp, I think, and I'd never really jumped before. And the next day, sure do I know, I'm like lined up in front of this comp ramp on my 65, like hitting it wide open, so. Wow. It all kind of just snowboarded from there. And then how did you get connected with Jacko? Yeah, through Truman. So they that, that were good friends. Uh, they'd been riding for years. And then, um, yeah, I just met Jacko that way. Were you, uh, uh, did you graduate high school? Uh, not quite. I, None I, of us I, do. I, I, yeah, yeah, right. No Australian <laughs> finished high school. <laughs> no, not really. Like, if an Australian finishes high school, they're going to, like, you know, Become a doctor. Let, they're going to they're gonna <laughs> let the whole doctor. different route. <laughs> <laughs> Or are you a doctor if you finish high school in Australia? I know if you finish high school, you're you're a barrister, a doctor, yeah, or a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird, eh? No, I finished uh, year year eleven. Good on you, mate. And then I dropped. Then I dropped out and I started because uh, I'm a qualified carpenter. So See? I, I started my chippy apprenticeship. Uh, yeah, so I did that for four years. So you're fully qualified. And I yeah finished that. Sick. Yeah, yeah. So I've got that behind me. My my parents the whole way through. They're always like. I understand that you don't really want to go to school, but we think you should, and you want to ride dirt bikes, but we think you should have something behind you. Like you can't ride dirt 100%. bikes your whole life, right? And I'm so glad I did it. It taught me a lot. And uh, I actually really enjoyed the trade, so. Yeah, and and, and listen, at, at, at some point, you know, you, it's different in Australia. People will, at no, grade nine, 10 or 11, will chop out, go to apprenticeship, become fully qualified by the yeah. time you're 22, 23. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can go out, work on your own. You can yeah, build yeah, yeah. your own houses. You can yeah, build, yeah, yeah. and that's just what a lot of people do. And they're yeah. very good at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's getting, it's, it's coming more and more popular. Like a lot of people do it nowadays. So it's, 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 it's a little different here. Are you, um, are you, are you base jumping and skydiving with these guys too? Yeah, yeah, so they just, you're doing everything. I kind of got no choice. <laughs> really? I am so yeah. glad I'm not in yeah. this crew. And I did not move yeah, I next it. door to you yeah. in Australia. Yeah, I, you, you got no choice when, you, when you're with Jackson. It's like, but, but it's cool because, yeah, you watch him and it's like, because we look up to him so much, you're like, even like even if you're not even really into it, you want to do it anyway, just because he did it, you know. Yeah. But yeah, the skydiving thing is cool. It's fun. You're not wingsuiting, are you? No. Yeah, good. No, no. I'm they sh they, they shouldn't be. Really they shouldn't hard. be legal. No, wings right? The bat yeah. wings. Oh things. yeah, no, that no, looks no. awesome. You see them and they yeah, they all die, oh, yeah. man. No, not all of them. Most of them. Yeah. The flying squirrels? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? But yeah, I the... heard uh, Jackson and his plans are to take us on a trip up uh -oh. trip somewhere Here next comes. week. Yeah, it's <sighs> wing shooting. He's got sure. He's What's got... scary if you skydiving or base jumping? Oh, base jumping for sure. Base jumping's kind of gnarly, huh? Oh, dude. So gnarly. So wait, when you base jump, so when you skydive, you start tandem and then you eventually can... Nah. No. No, 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 no. You never did tandem? Australia. No, I, ne no. I never did a tandem. No, they don't do that stuff there. Never. So you go there and you do You like can't do one... guy on guy there. It's, that's a little weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Australians. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so you just, from the gate, go. No, no so you go, it, it course usually takes like four days. Okay. You go, you do a day of theory and they tell you everything and then... The next morning, they pretty well send you up in the plane. You by yourself. You jump out, but you got two people with you, two instructors, and they help you like get stable. Because that takes a little bit to learn, like how to get stable and not just end up in a bloody. I'm the completely opposite. I was yeah. like, I'm not doing the course, and I strapped myself to Trevor Jacobs. <laughs> Yeah, I did a tandem. And then when yeah. I, did, when I, tandem I, when, sure. when I jumped like out, I was like, maybe that's I, I liked it. I did it twice. No, I'd probably definitely. never do it again, but I've done it right. twice. I did tandem once. Yeah, I did tandem twice. No, we love it so much. Because Jackson's into his planes and stuff, he's always got buddies that come in. He's got an airstrip at his house. So he's always got buddies that come in with planes, and we just jump, go up in an afternoon and have a quick... Well, it's Let's just go jump smart. out of a plane real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Smart to have a parachute probably <laughs> when you're flying with Jocko, yeah? All oh, right, right. Just have a parachute in general. <laughs> Yeah. You know what's funny though? You know what I really like about the motorbikes is last night we're at Vert, and then as soon as that, as soon as yeah, the bikes the turn on, <laughs> you see the crowd just start moving. Yeah, it was. It's it all was, you guys have got to do is turn the bike on, and you've got everyone's yeah. full attention. It was cool last night. Huh? It was. A, it was, a it was big cool. Crowd. Was big crowd. The sunset. The wow, people. Yeah. Like yeah. really what good. you guys were doing. Even just watching like the first few minutes of practice. It like, was, like, like, holy I, crap! This double. is my my like, third X Games. The last two have been at Axel's place without a crowd, and then. Last night with a crowd, I rode out for the first time and I was like blown away. Like oh, this is your first time competing with a crowd? Yeah. Because you've yeah. just been at Axel's Axel's, property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I was like, I was my, like, even the first jump, I was kind of like wigged out a little bit because it's so noisy and so many Kind of mess with your head I'm a little like, bit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, mess with me. Yeah, for sure. Some people are into it. Different. There was a different atmosphere. But obviously, I, I, I thrived. Like, I loved it. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll get used to it, mate. There's going to yeah. be plenty more of that game from. Yeah, I hope so.
Danny, what advice you got for it? Well, I had a question. I kind of wanted to know, like, what, like, the stepping stones for you of, like, yeah. kind of, like, favorite tricks you yeah, learned yeah, yeah. throughout, like, the yeah. kind of the cycle to get where you are. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I mean, definitely for freestyle matter, the key is to go small. Like, stepping stones in a small way. Yeah. Like, you don't want to go out there and turtle yourself because if you, cr if you crash, you, you're hurt. You're going to be hurt. And you're going to be out for... A reasonable bad amount. You could of be time, out you know? for six months. Yeah, you could be out for months at a time, and you can't you can't afford to do that. You, it's, it's it's much better to just take small little steps, and uh, it's like. But like looking back as like when you were a grommy, you know, like right. getting on those bikes. Yeah, so like, it just starts off. You start you start jumping. The first, the main thing is to learn how to jump a bike properly. Like you need to be able to jump, control it, and then you start taking feet off, take hands off. Um, how long does that take? I mean, feet and hands aren't so bad. Like you should like pick that up. Within like a week or so. Did you learn to fit on the did you learn but, to flip on the foam pit first? Yeah, hundred percent, definitely. Yeah, I've been so lucky to have uh Jackson like put me under his wing. He he's already he had the he's had the foam pit and I just got yeah. I won big time when, when I was able to use his facilities to, to learn the flip. Yeah, well it's like you definitely go in a foam pit and even you start on the on the super kicker ramp, so it's a, a taller, steeper ramp, makes it easier to flip. You do that, you learn that before you go to the comp ramp, which is a little yeah, the main ramp we use, and even if you do the comp ramp, you like might push it in a bit, then you drag it back, and you do a bunch in the foam pit, and then uh, I kind of did the first flips before airbags were kind of in, and I did like did foam pit then to dirt, but now you'd sort of go foam pit, airbag. Um, so there's dirt. like a three stop kind yeah. of series. Yeah, which uh, is cool because because it help it just just keeps you safe. It's not easy. It's scary. It's it's definitely easy not to, uh, for when you first learn the the backflip, like it's a. Well, isn't it crazy thing. to think about like however many years ago a backflip would win you a gold medal and right. now it's it's, right. it's just standard. Yeah. Well, and it was just it's like, a warm but, but, it's yeah. a warm up trick. Yeah, Dan. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what they were doing me. at the warm up. We were like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. is it started. Yeah, backflip for me is not much more to think about than a straight jump. Well, it's the same. Could you do same. a backflip with Brittany on the back? Ah, uh, yeah, I think so. Would you jump on the back of Benny's <laughs> bike? I mean, if there's a foam pit, maybe. <laughs> a foam pit? Uh, <laughs> No. Uh, so no. When, <laughs> Maybe we should see that at X Games. Yeah, yeah. And just start oh, adding yeah, people yeah, to yeah, the bike. Yeah. 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 She's got her shoulder pads on already. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. love this. A tandem, a tandem comp could be cool. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but do you remember like the feeling of like landing your first backflip? Oh yeah, clear as day. Really? Clear as day. Yeah, yeah. It's like. Uh, it's kind of the same process that I'm at with with double flips now. Like. I remember doing my first one and just like shakes, like sweating, like wow, like couldn't do another one because I was just that hyped yeah. up. Yeah, takes a lot to to just be able to relax with it and get comfortable. Uh, I was I was like that with double flips for a long time, but now I'm kind of more more chill. I just go out and I'll do ten each day. Yeah, you're just kind of used to it. Yeah. Is that kind of the standard when you're riding? You're gonna do ten double flips? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I remember Cam Slinker telling me, God damn it, I can't believe I'm going to do another double flip right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and but now it's, it's just like, standard. It, it, it's... And he's like, I do 10 a day, dude. Yeah. Yeah, cool. but that, I mean, that's at home. Yeah, when you come to the contest, it's a different story. Yeah. Um, like, I was freaking out a little bit. Like, you, you get somewhere, the, the ramp might be a little different elevation, the landing's different, landing might be Well, smaller. what happened in practice? The, 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 I, I saw them move the middle ramp back, which is, they're three ramps, right? Yeah. So explain the three different ramps. Okay, so we had the, the main comp ramp that's been around forever. Yep. It's just the standard ramp, the one that David jumped. Yep. We have the new next gen ramp, the one that Levi Sherwood built. It's kind of similar to the comp ramp. But it's about a meter taller. Uh, it's a, yeah, so you got a bit more and a little, little, little steeper. So you go a lot higher. It rotates easier for yep. backflips and stuff. It's a really cool ramp. I can't wait to do more on that. And then we also had the super kicker. Okay, now the the one that they moved is that more of the warm up the, ramp? The Levi ramp. Yeah. So they moved that because our first day of practice when we got here, it was super windy and it was a massive uh, tailwind. So when we jump on the comp ramp, it was really hard for it really uh, easy, sorry, for the for the wind to push you over the landing, and it was like really easy to miss. Like you might you, like you jump it slow and you think you're gonna case it, but the wind seriously pushes you and you just land in the flat. So it was like no one really wanted to jump the Levi ramp. Like if you jump that and if you miss the landing, 
see you later, Tim Fib. Like you. See you later, Tim <laughs> Fib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Tyler no. Beerman almost lost his tongue. Right. right. Put a hole right through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like you don't want to overjump that ramp, so. They made some changes to the landing and then they pushed it in a little bit just so the boys could get a few hits out and they dragged it back. Gnarly. Yeah, oh, dude. Uh, where's crazy. Levi? I don't know. I think he's uh, in, his, <laughs> in, his, in his workshop back home. He Florida. just hasn't come back. Uh, he hasn't left since COVID, right? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Levi Sherb was one of the gnarliest freestyle motocross of all time, oh, designing man, ramps and so one of the gnarliest. Big. He's still kind of in his peak yeah. and we just haven't seen him since COVID. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he do the backflip on the snowmobile too? Or like the snowmobile? Uh, sure no, nah, that I wasn't know, Levi. I know Jackson. No. Oh, I think there was a guy what? named Levi, sorry, that did oh, okay. that does. That, that, that was a snowmobile. No, yeah, that's not yeah. Sherwood. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, ja Jackson famously, when X Games would just let people do anything, um, <laughs> they were like, oh, let's give this crazy kid that's a uh, motor freestyle motocross guy. Jack and I could barely ride a bike at that let's time. Let's throw him on a snowmobile. <laughs> let's throw him on a snowmobile. <laughs> they had him the fr <coughs> first time he went out, flipped it, the snowmobile ran away, yeah. and then ran into the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I miss those days. I liked that. Uh, <laughs> like, I feel like you should get an extra medal to be able to cross sport like that. There's uh, a suggestion box here, Dan. You can go and d suggest whatever you I've want. I've been filling it up with suggestions. <laughs> yeah. The whole route that Jackson went down with the snow bike thing, that was cool. That the was race, really right? Cool. Yeah. Uh, and then oh. and, and the best trick comp that they, that they started doing. Oh, yeah. They're doing yep. best trick on the snow bike? Yeah. I think that was cool. It, 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 it had a run, the snowmobile thing. I, I, I don't know. The snowmobile guys are pissed that they're not in X Games anymore. I don't know if it's coming back. The snow yeah. bike thing I like, the racing. Yeah, yeah. I thought that gnarly. was sick. Like, because you can put, Villapoto came out and you can put all these old pros and then yeah. get these snowmobile guys, but everyone can kind of do it. Axel Hodges did it. Right. I think building the snow, so it's like a motorbike, it's the snow bike. So yep. it's a motorbike with a wheel on the front, basically. I wouldn't like to do it. A sled. <laughs> sled yeah. <laughs> Didn't it look fun to watch? Oh, it was gnarly. Like, the course was looks sick. Yeah, and yeah. then you can bring people like Villapoto back and then they're just to have fun. Axel. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't. Yeah, Axel would rip on one of those. He things. did, was doing really well, and he crashed one. He yeah, crashed, yeah. but he did really well. I think that'd be cool, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. cool to build out. Um, yeah. So we're kind of wrapping up here. Benny, um, we appreciate you. Stay healthy. Yeah, I don't, you guys. I, 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 I don't, you got to be careful <laughs> when you're with those guys, all right? I That's know, all I'm saying. Know. Just just know, <laughs> know your crowd. <laughs> Benny, we love you, dude. Keep it up. Stoke, you're a part of the Boss Energy family. Thank you, brother. Thank you for everybody in there. Thanks, guys.